Praise the Lord. All right, what have we been learning this evening, this night? About strongholds. At the end of the day, we all want to receive from God, right? Okay. What are the different ways we can receive from God? Okay, before we say happy, what are the different ways? How do we receive from God? By our faith. Is it by our prayers or by our faith? By faith. So, how do we exercise our faith? What are the different ways we can exercise our faith? Exercising our faith. How do we exercise our faith? Let us let us see one of the ways how we can exercise our faith. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. story about or what is this uh, chapter about the faith of a centurion does anyone remember who is the centurion here yeah. yes. who is the centurion the woman yes. centurion was a pagan he was a Roman officer as the word suggests centurion he had about probably 100 people under him. Right, in the army. And it talks about the faith of a centurion. This man was not even a Jew. He did not belong to the covenant of Israel. And yet, when we read this, let's see what it says here. And when Jesus yes. was entered into Capernaum. Okay, if you want to take this one. When Jesus was entered into the family, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my son shall be healed. Can we read that verse in eight, eight again? The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only. But speak the word only. Okay? And my servant shall be healed. Okay, let's stop for a moment there. Did the centurion make a request to Jesus? He makes a request to Jesus and that he tells Jesus, my son is not well and I want you to heal him. Does he tell Jesus how he wants his son to be healed? Initially, he doesn't tell Jesus how he wants his son to be healed. But what does Jesus offer to do? Jesus offers to go to his house and heal his son. Now listen to this. Jesus offers to go to the centurion's house and heal him. And what was Jesus' plan to heal him? How? By going to his house and laying his hands on the centurion's sons and getting him healed. But see what he says in verse 8. He says, Lord, I'm not even worthy that you should come to my house. And this is the verse that we always say at every mass, don't we? Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. And my soul shall be healed. 
look at the centurion what does he say lord i am not worthy that you should come to my home but only speak the word only speak the word and you know jesus looks at what the centurion says and look at what the next line says verse 9 verse 9 it says for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me and i say to this man go and he goes and to another come and he comes and to my servant do this and he do it okay when jesus said this he marveled and said to them that followed verily i say unto you I have not found so great faith no not in Israel okay imagine this man is a pagan he doesn't belong to the covenant of Israel but he understands one thing that there's power in the words of Jesus are you with me yes he understands the authority of jesus and he compares the authority of jesus to the physical authority that he had when he commands his servants his soldiers to do the job so he says i tell the soldier go and he goes this one come and he comes and he says just like i can do that ordering my people jesus with your words you have the power to be speak and get the work done amen now my question to you is brothers and sisters do we have the authority of christ yes, yes. do we have power in our words yes then if we really believe that we belong to the covenant of israel we are the new israel right yes. is there power in our words yes do we believe that when we speak the word of god healing must occur Yes. Then why aren't we speaking the word? Why aren't we speaking the word? Is because we lack confidence. Because we lack confidence. This man, the centurion, knew his authority. The people who under him knew that he was their boss. That when he gave a command. they had to obey are you understanding yes all the people who were under the authority of the centurion knew that their boss had the authority to give them orders and they would comply to the orders in the same way jesus knew his authority and when he spoke he had to get the desired result who was he speaking to human beings what jesus speaking to he was speaking to the devil he was speaking to the sicknesses now i am asking you one thing do you think sickness comes from god no no from whom does sickness come from the devil so obviously it comes from the devil if jesus has to rebuke the sickness that means he is using his authority to destroy works of the devil is that true yes if sickness is coming from god then it would be a conflict between the father and the son god would give the sickness and his son would be going and rebuking that sickness would there be a clash so it's very clear that sickness doesn't come from god but sickness comes from the devil many a times we hear people say why did god give me that sickness Why did God punish me? Let me tell you, brothers and sisters. Let us get this straight in our minds once and for all. Whenever a sickness comes, we can't be very happy about it. We can't be complaining about it. We can't even question God about it. But we can use our authority and speak to it and command it to get out of our lives. When we understand our authority in Christ, then just like the centurion. 
who could send his soldiers to go and run errands for them. Go and do this, go and do that. In the same way, Jesus said, all those who believe in him shall do the same works that he did. Is that true? So if Jesus could speak the word and he could get the job done, that's exactly what happened. He says in verse 11, And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out. Who are the children of the kingdom? The children of the kingdom were the Israelites, were the Jews. But look at what they were doing. They weren't using the authority. And here is a centurion who understands in the natural his authority. And he says, if Jesus, you can speak the word in the same way, he says, we who are the children of the living God, because of what Jesus has done, have the same authority today. And then see what happens. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so shall it be unto thee. And his servant was healed in the same hour. That's what happened. The man, uh, the centurion's servant is at home. The centurion sends another servant to give the message. Centurion is not there at all in the picture. But the centurion only believes that there is authority in the words of Jesus. So which is one way we can receive from God? By speaking the word, commanding that sickness to leave in the authority of Christ. Right? Yes. Is that true? Yes. So, God will honor our faith depending on what we choose to believe. Let's go to another one. Let's go to Mark 5, 21 to 36. Let's go to Mark 5, 21 to 36. In this place, we read about Jairus. Okay? So let's read Mark 5, 21. When Jesus passed over the hill of Jairus, also the other side, much people gathered unto him, and they were young and full of faith. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, veiled by the Lord. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Okay. I just want to ask you one thing. Who was Jairus? The ruler of the synagogue. Can you imagine Jairus is the ruler of a synagogue? Is he a Jew? Yeah. Is he friendly with Jesus? No. Why? The Jews, especially the synagogue official would have definitely been in conflict with Jesus because they were still operating according to the law. law. And here is Jesus preaching to a crowd and the centurion comes and bows down at Jesus' feet. Is that easy? I'm asking you. You know, when you talk about a synagogue official, you know what is that position? It could be something something like a bishop or a cardinal. Today, a bishop or a cardinal with that position and that status. Jesus is preaching and there's a big crowd there. And Jairus bows down to Jesus and he says, Please come to my home because my daughter is at the point of death. That's what he says. Is that what he says? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does five uh, twenty-three say? And he saw him greatly, saying, "My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live." Okay, hold on a second. What was
was the request of Jairus? What was Jairus' request? Request to find my leg. See what he says. Could you see that again? Could you repeat that again? One more time. Come and lay hands on her. Can you see what the centurion did? The centurion was bypassing the time that would have been required for Jesus to travel from where he was to his house so that he could speak the word to where he was and get the job done. Jairus' daughter is at the point of death. Do you listen? Are you listening? Yes. Jairus' daughter is at the point of death. But that Jairus exercised the same faith of the centurion. No. He tells Jesus, Jesus, you are preaching among this crowd. Can you come and lay hands? If his daughter is at the point of death, is it going to take time for Jesus to reach him? The, the, the house? Yes. Absolutely. Can you see the difference? Now Jesus could have said, Jairus, I'm busy preaching to this crowd. Okay, I'll just speak the word and your daughter will be healed. Could Jesus have done that? Yes. But Jesus would not do that because Jesus would honor Jairus' request. Are you understanding? Yeah. The way you want to receive does not depend on God but depends on you and depends on me. In the case of Jairus, Jairus asked Jesus to speak the word. He wanted a shortcut. He wanted the quickest way. The centurion. The centurion. Right? In the case of Jairus who belonged to the community of Israel, of the covenant, in spite of knowing that his daughter is at the point of death, he comes to Jesus and he says, Jesus, please come to my home and lay your hands on her. So what does this mean? Even if our situation is as critical as ever, the choice of receiving healing depends not on God, but depends on you and me. We can always receive as fast as possible healing if we understand our authority in Christ. But if you believe that there's going to be a preacher who's going to come, there's going to be a particular priest who's going to come, and only when he comes to my house and lays hands and receive healing, that's how I will receive. Are you understanding? So, if that healing which Jesus did with the centurion's servant, Jairus had to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, my daughter is at the point of death. Can you just speak the word? Do you think that Jesus would have not done that? He surely would have done it. But he had to honor the request. He had to honor the faith of Jairus. Let's go ahead and read further what happened. Verse 20, Oh. And Jesus went to him, and much people followed him and saw him. Thank you, Father. And the second woman, which had an issue of blood, 12 years. How many years? 12 years. Can you imagine a woman has an issue of blood for 12 years? Now let's see how she got her healing. Okay. And had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. So, in 12 years, a woman with the issue of blood has been suffering. Instead of getting better, in spite of going to physicians, what's happening to her? Her situation has got only only worse. Okay. Verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, she in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, 
If I will talk for this girl, I shall be made whole. Okay, let's go. Let's talk for a while. The centurion received this healing of his servant when he asked Jesus to speak the word. Is that right? Jairus, his daughter, received the healing because she, he asked Jesus to come and lay hands. Here's a woman with the issue of blood for 12 years who's suffering from bleeding. She comes to hear about Jesus, the miracle worker. And how does she receive a healing? No. She doesn't receive a healing by touch. See, what does she say again? What does she do? Let's read this whole thing again. Verse 28. For she said, For she is slow, I shall be whole. Okay. Can you imagine a woman with 12 years bleeding? Not 12 days, not 12 months, but 12 years bleeding. What would be the state of such a woman? How strong would she be? How strong would she be? Jesus is preaching to a crowd that we just read. He was preaching to a multitude. Is that right? Jairus comes, bows down to the feet of Jesus. And Jesus says, come on Jairus. He stops preaching to the crowd and he honors the worship of Jairus because Jairus humbled himself in spite of his status. Jesus is honored by the worship and humility of Jairus. Right? He leaves the crowd and he starts walking. How many people do you think would have been walking with that crowd touching Jesus? Thousands, right? Thousands. You know, for all the miracles that Jesus has done, when he fed the 5,000, and it says, not including women and children. If Jesus is preaching to a multitude, a big crowd, do you think that there is any chance for a woman of 12 years to even get access to Jesus? Think about it for a moment. Even if you are fit enough, even if you are strong enough, to get through the multitude and actually go there and touch Jesus is one thing. But for a woman who's been bleeding for 12 years, who's absolutely weak, who's mentally drained out, who's physically drained out, who's drained out of all her finances, for her to reach through the crowd and touch Jesus, is it going to be easy? No. So what was her way of receiving? I want you to read that again. Verse 28. For she said, for she said, if she said, to whom did she say? To herself. to herself. Is that right? She kept speaking the word to herself. And what does she say? If I may talk for she is slow, I shall be whole. Okay. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. Is that right? Here's a woman who has exhausted every mode of healing and for 12 years she receives nothing. Now she hears there is a miracle worker by the name of Jesus and if she hears about the miracle worker Jesus, then she has now has to find a way to reach Jesus, touch his garments, and get healed. Is that true? But she only says to herself, she makes a wish, she makes a dream, she makes a desire. If only I can touch the hem of his garments, I shall be healed. Now listen to this. She is probably at home. She has made the decision in her mind that if only I touch the hem of his garment, She's only thinking that I will only touch the hem of his garments and I shall get healed. She's not expecting Jesus to speak the word. She's not expecting Jesus to have Jesus lay hands on her. She's only expecting to be 
teach the heaven of God to get paid. Do you understand? So, which is the third way that we can receive from Jesus? Here's what the, what the woman with the issue of blood did. She wants to touch the hem of his garment despite being so weak. She's only speaking to herself. If only I touch the hem of his garment. Now listen to this again. As she starts speaking this word, if only I touch the hem of his garment, if only I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. If only I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. Now as she speaks the word to herself, she's speaking life. The Holy Spirit is getting into action. The Holy Spirit is getting into action. And now the Holy Spirit is making a way for her to travel through the crowd. Now, someone will say, how could the woman who was bleeding for 12 years, so weak, could actually heal Jesus and touch the hem of his garment? This is how it happened. When you understand that you keep speaking God's word continually, the Holy Spirit will make a way where a person will sort of, you know, when, without their knowing himself, will turn their direction in such a way that there will be gaps be created and the woman will be able to cruise through. If not, there is no way that a woman Ever make it through the crowd because no one's going to let a woman who's weak to even pass through to reach Jesus. Are you understanding? So, what is the third way we can receive from Jesus? By speaking the word continually. And what do we call that? Meditating on the word of God. You may not need anyone to lay hands on you, you may not even need. Jesus to speak the word for you, but you have the authority of continually speaking God's word and receiving your healing. So which are the three ways? First, centurion faith, wherein we take the authority, just like Jesus had the authority, we too can take the authority in Christ to speak the word. The second one is, we have someone lay hands on us, because the word of God says in Mark 16, 16, those who believe in me shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. And the third is by continually meditating on the word of God, speaking it to ourselves, receiving that word, allowing the Holy Spirit to work, and that's the way we receive healing. Now I want to ask each of you here this evening, this, this morning, if you are not well, Okay, listen to me. If you are not well, which is the best option that you would choose to receive your healing? Yes, brother. First, I will say, if I am wrong, then my will say anything. If I am not well, first I will say, if I am born wrong, and still I have no. Second thing I see, I will say, Anything same or wrong from the other person. Third, I think I will see if it is for the glory of God. If it is for the glory of God. No, my question to you is you have the three ways in which you can receive healing. Would you choose to speak the word continually? Would you choose to use your authority in Christ? Or would you want someone to lay hands on you? My question is. Which would you choose? I would, I would speak the word, God's word. Then I would, if it's not possible, I would speak some other way. Not possible, if it is for God's glory, I will not tolerate If you, you spoke the word and you did not receive it, yeah. then you would go to use someone else's faith, is it? Yeah. So that means you don't have the faith to receive. What should be our first option? What should be our first option? I will tell you what should be our first option. Listen to this carefully. 
It's not that we don't lay hands on people. But what should be our first option and which should be the option for us always? That is the option that will truly define where we are going to be destined for. Listen to this. Let's go to Mark 16 verse 16.
not just getting your needs met, not getting your financial needs met or your, your physical healing. But the ultimate goal is to be a believer and then to be baptized so that our final destination, remember that, our ultimate destination for all eternity should be with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. Do you understand? Yes. This is the intention of a believer. This is the intention of all of us who come to church to listen to God's word. Because surely God's word heals. Surely God's word provides for our need. Surely God's word will fix our situations in our life. Surely God's word will give us everything that the word of God says. Amen. But at the end of the day, if we don't become believers, where the word of God is the primary authority in our life, we do not use this word in our day-to-day -day living. Surely, we are not going to be in connection with the word, connection with the Lord, in, in unity with the Lord, and definitely, we can't make it there. So tonight, let us understand this one important truth, that when the word of God is preached, it is important for us to take these truths, apply them in our life, use them in our life, and from there, expand our knowledge of the word by going deeper and deeper, searching, researching the word, so that our relationship with the Lord gets stronger and stronger each day. And that is exactly what is eternal life. What is eternal life? What is eternal life? A life with a relationship with God. A life knowing God knowing Jesus Christ through his word. So whenever the word is preached, we look for every opportunity to get an understanding of the word. That understanding of the word helps us to understand God's love. Understanding God's love helps us to receive from him everything because he has already done it all for us on the cross. When we believe what has already been done, we believe what has already been finished on the cross, in receiving from God is easy because we have good understanding. And what is understanding? What is understanding? No, you. Understanding is having a practical working knowledge. The word understanding means having a practical working knowledge. When we understand this word practically, how it can be used in our day-to-day -day life, Surely, we will use it to receive from God. Is that true? Yeah. Whether it's in the area of our finance, in our health, in our relationship, anywhere. The moment we have understanding, we will surely receive it because God is faithful to His word. But if God is faithful to His word and we don't have an understanding, as much as we pray, as much as we speak the word, we will never receive it. Because the important thing is for us to First, a believer. A believer of the word, a believer of the promise of God. So, tonight, brothers and sisters, after this night vigil and the one that we had before at this place, which was not a night vigil, which was a much shorter session, what do you think would be the ultimate goal or would be the success of this night's vigil for us, Brother Johnson and myself, as far as you are concerned? That you came to a night vigil and you spent some time with the Lord. Or you were not well and you got your healing and you went home. Or you got a better understanding of the word so that now when you go back, you are not going to stop with what you have already received, but you are ready to research and search and get more and more and more deeper with this relationship with God through His word so that you know this God better. And knowing Him better, you can share Him with everyone you meet. Amen? Amen? Amen. And that is the life with God that we need to live here and now. Because if we don't experience a life with God here and now, we're never going to experience it after our death. That's our goal. That's our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is not just getting receiving from God. That surely will come because God is faithful. Ultimate goal is to be.
build our relationship each day to know this God better and better and better. Experience His love, experience His mercy, experience the perfect understanding of His word. And experiencing eternal life will not be after we pass from this life. Eternal life starts here and now. And according to Jesus, what is eternal life? John 17, 3. Let's see what John 17, 3 says. Because that is our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to experience eternal life. So what is eternal life? Let's read what the eternal life is. John chapter 17, verse 3. Let's read that together. And this is life, and this is life eternal. That they might know me, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So what is eternal life? Is it a life after we pass through this life? No. Eternal life starts the very day we make a decision to know him and know his word. If we don't know his word, do you think we know God? If we don't know his word, do we know Jesus Christ? No. And Jesus said in his word, if you love me, if you love me, Jesus says this, don't just say if you love me. To prove that you really love me, believe my word, obey my word, do what my word says. Where does he say that? In John chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. Let us see what it says. John 14, 21 to 23. If we need to experience eternal life here on earth, we need to know this God. We need to believe his word. We need to obey his word. Because only then we can prove to him that we love him. So let's see what John 14, 21 says. Can we see, read that together? He that has my commandments and keeps them he is it that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Can you imagine? Eternal life is knowing God and knowing Jesus Christ. And here Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my word, and my heavenly Father will love you, and I myself will love you. I will manifest myself to you. What does it mean of manifest? I will show my glory to you. I will show my glory to you. What does it mean that God will manifest to show his glory to us? What does it mean that God will show his glory to us? What does it mean of glory? What does it mean of glory? Let me ask you something. When someone is not well, say for example, somebody has got a pain in their body, say they've got spondylosis, back pain. Can we see God there physically? No. But can we see the power of God there when the person gets healed? Yes. So what is glory? That's the healing. The, the power of God, which is witnessed and the manifestation seen because God has used his power to bring that change in that situation. That is glory. That is glory. So what is God's glory? Do you think when a person is sick, does it glorify God? When a person is living in poverty, does it glorify God? When a person is going through a relationship problem, does it glorify God? But when a person gets healed, when a person needs a provider, when the relationship is restored, does it bring glory to God? 100% brings glory to God. Because God is glorified when that situation is changed. So what is glory? Glory is not able to see the living God, but be able to see His power and change in that situation. And that is God's glory. Amen. So here the word says, how will He manifest Himself to us? He will manifest himself to us only when we obey his word. And how can you and I obey his word if we don't even know his word? So what is the first thing to know? Is to know his word. And to know his word, we have to start reading, studying, reflecting, meditating, memorizing, and then finally obeying and doing it. Then only you will know him when you know him, he says, I will come and dwell inside of him. My father will dwell inside of him. The Holy Spirit will dwell inside of him. The Holy
inside of him. And when the Trinity is dwelling inside of you, do you think that there is any opportunity for sickness to remain? No. Is there any opportunity for poverty to remain? No. Is there any opportunity for any problems to be there? No. You will always be victorious wherever you stand. And that's what it says. He will manifest when we do his work. So at the end of the day, what is important for each one of us? The manifestation is definitely guaranteed. But what is important for us is to have a relationship with God through his word, to become believers of his word, so that by being believers, according to Mark 16, when you are a believer and are baptized, then only you are saved. If you're not a believer of the word, you don't even see that the word is relevant to your life. You don't even think that the word is important to you. You don't even see its power in your life. Are you a believer or not a believer? Should not. And the question whether I'm a believer or not is not anyone else's decision or anyone's judgment. It's our own. We ourselves know in our heart whether we really believe that word or whether we don't believe. So, if we make that our commitment today, that this word that has been preached is not only for us to get our miracle. Now, we may of us come with our needs when the retreats take place. Many of us come to a retreat house because we need physical care. And that's good. We need to come with great expectation. But that's not the goal. The goal is to know him through his word, to believe his word. And when we do his word, God, that we love Him, that we are having a relationship with Him, and we are believing His Word. Because by doing His Word, and believing His Word, we are proving to Him that we love Him. And not only are we receiving here on earth, but we have our future guaranteed with Him forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. Eternal life starts here and now, and after our death, it's only that we are in His presence in a different body. We are in a resurrected body after we go out of this life. So it is so important for us right here and now to start studying, doing, experiencing God's glory in our life every single day. Amen? Amen. So let's just close our eyes. Loving Father, we have been hearing the word. The word has been preached. You have promised us when the truth of the word is preached, it shall always be accompanied with signs and wonders. But Lord, signs and wonders is not our ultimate goal. Knowing you, knowing your word, believing your word, and allowing your glory to manifest in our lives is our ultimate goal. Experience eternal life, knowing you, the true God, knowing Jesus Christ, is our ultimate goal. Because when we know you are God, when we know your love, we know your word, we know what the word says, and we know what your word expects us to do, then only we can experience that abundant life, that eternal life, a life which is in relationship with you, the creator, that will always take us to our destiny which you have made us. Lord, tonight, as we come in your presence, we repent for the times that we have been guided by our sense knowledge. We have walked by sight and not by faith. But tonight, this morning, after this retreat, after all that we have heard, help us to make this commitment to study your word every day and to obtain victories every single day of our life that each day we can become more and more like your son Jesus. That as we soak ourselves in the living world, our character changes and we become more Christ-like each day. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this understanding and helping us each day to truly come closer to you, closer by understanding and knowing you
you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. So we have the responsibility to make them see the truth, and the truth will set them free. Amen. Amen. This brother just said, when a person is sick, he says, the elders shall go to the house of the one who is sick and shall make the prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. faith. Does it say that the person will pray somewhere, will go to the sick and make the prayer of faith? So, is the person going to pray with the person according to God's word? So, if we start praying for the sick right now, because many times we pray for the sick, we just hope that when we throw some prayers, the person will be well. How would the Bible or the Word of God allow us to get healing for even a loved one? The first and foremost thing is to pray with the loved one or to pray over the loved one or to give the truth to the loved one so that that understanding of the truth is going to destroy that sickness. Amen. So many times we pray. We just, someone says, can you pray for me please? Instead of praying for them over the phone, I mean, just saying, I will pray for you. And the person says, I'm not well. Can we both agree on the phone and pray together? The word says this, I want to agree with you and pray for your healing. That would be a prayer of faith, just like brother said. Or if you find the person right in front of you, exercise your faith, lay your hands, command that sickness to be, and give that person healing. But let us not use terminology and say, I will pray for you. Pray for you doesn't work the way you pray with or pray over. Please understand this. Okay? Alright? Yeah? Cool. Okay. So, how many of you here who are here right now want healing? See, we can we, we, we make a general prayer for those who are not well. Let's all agree together here for those who are not well. But here right now, is everyone having good health? No problem whatsoever? No one wants healing. You are already healed. Yeah. So let's give the Lord a round of applause because we have understood that when we understand His Lord, that understanding has already given us healing. Amen? Amen? So thank you very much. And before we end, let's all agree and pray for all those who have asked for prayers. Because when we as a church agree and pray, surely the Lord answers. Amen. Because when people agree for healing for those who are not well, well, the sister came and said, we will make a prayer for them. So loving Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity you have given us to listen to your word, to understand the truth, and most of all, Lord God, to build our relationship with you through your word. And you have promised us to manifest your glory when we understand do your word every day of our life. At this very moment, we, all of us, come into agreement and pray for all those who are not well right now. Especially those who are going through terminal sicknesses, cancers, those who are having sickness in their bodies, wherever they are. Right now, Father, we together come into agreement and pray for healing for all those who are sick of those of their loved ones here. Command healing and complete restoration to their bodies. And in the name of Jesus, we come into agreement and believe that Jesus, as we speak, your healing love is destroying that sickness. Just as you spoke the word and commanded healing to the centurion servant. Right now, Lord, we command healing. By speaking those words of our authority in Christ, destroying that cancer, destroying that sickness, destroying that infirmity, and receiving that healing for the ones we are praying for, for the loved ones. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So thank you all, brothers and sisters. Thank you for being such a wonderful, patient congregation. You know, a night vigil is not always easy. If you have to stay for so many hours awake, then we are, our bodies are accustomed to a good night's rest. Is that true? Yeah. But the fact that you are being here, you need to really applaud yourself. The Lord is so pleased that you made this sacrifice because of your hunger and thirst for the world.
word of God. And so God honors you and you need to give yourself the round of applause. God bless you. And thank you so much for being here. We look forward to each one of you the next time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, please, please listen to me, please. Um, we've, we've had some real big things to this um, night of the morning. And we've learned a lot. But the scripture says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more we hear some more of these things, the more our understanding grows. I would want to recommend that we try to listen to some of Brother Johnson's YouTube messages. I just want to encourage you because the more you hear this, the more you, your faith is built. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And there are some books that will be shared around that I believe was written by Brother Johnson and the team. It's all the collection of the truth. Okay, all the collection of the truth. So it's recommended you have this thing to arm yourself. Amen. Amen. I will also recommend we have the Bible study group that meets every Sunday. It's a place where you can exercise what you believe and also keep hearing the word of God. We encourage you to join the Bible study group on Sundays after the 11 a.m. mass. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Lastly, please, I want to beg of you, we missed something along the line. We were supposed to call, have a collection in support of Brother Johnson's ministry. We didn't, we didn't do it last Saturday. We are going to be this night with you. Um, we missed it somewhere along the line. Please, is it okay if we, if we, if we receive a collection for Brother Johnson's ministry? Amen. Okay, we will have a bag shared around, okay? And if you could be generous enough to support this ministry. Amen. Oh, Brother. Please, yeah. we want to do this. <laughs> and last, uh, one more thing. There will be a life in the spirit seminar that will be started in Langley uh, sometime, I think, the 7th, the 9th of September. 9th to the 13th. 9th to the 13th, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, I think Brother Ivan and his team will be running that through. Amen. Amen. So please, can we have a, a, a collection round, please? 